One of my first ever gaming memories was when I was 6 years old, back in 1993, playing the original Mortal Kombat. I was playing Scorpion, and all of a sudden, I managed to pull off his toasty fatality. I have absolutely no idea how. My jaw hit the ground, and I was absolutely hooked on the series from that point onwards. To call myself a fanboy of Mortal Kombat back then is a complete understatement. I owned every single game back then. I genuinely think it was the best series on the planet at one point. That's how much the series meant to me as a kid. I still remember the day I got Mortal Kombat 2 and how excited I was. I got it for my birthday. I still remember the day I got Mortal Kombat 3. I actually remember being in my next door neighbor's kitchen discussing how much better Mortal Kombat 3 was than Street Fighter 2. Stuff like that. I still remember playing Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 in the arcades before it was even out on console and I remember the exact day that my mum gave me Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 for the Sega Saturn and that was one hell of a special day and I still think that's one of the best games ever made. And I still remember the crazy amount of fun I got out of Mortal Kombat Trilogy back in December of 1996 when I got it for my Christmas. Point being, the series back then could do absolutely no wrong for someone like myself and the people that will understand what I'm saying are people who went through the exact same as me and consider it one of the best series that they ever played. Back then, it, it really couldn't get any better. I was so excited for Mortal Kombat 4 when it got announced. I actually remember I got it early and I got it for the N64 and the first day I turned it on, even back then as a kid, I knew the game was not good. So, Mortal Kombat 4 actually soured my taste on the Mortal Kombat franchise from that point onwards. I actually didn't play Deadly Alliance or Mortal Kombat Deception because I just didn't really dig the style of the games. I actually didn't really like the way they looked. I actually played them at a friend's house and I didn't really like them too much. So I actually thought that was going to be the end of my Mortal Kombat journey right then and there. That was until I seen an advert for Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks that was going to be the next game in the franchise, it actually wasn't going to be a normal fighting game. It was actually going to be an adventure fighting game that was going to be centered around the events of Mortal Kombat 2. And I absolutely love Mortal Kombat 2 growing up. It had been a long time since I bought a Mortal Kombat game, so I was almost guaranteed to be getting this game. I just thought it looked amazing. The fact that it was going to be an adventure game intrigued me right off the bat because I did play games like Mortal Kombat mythologies back in the day with Sub-Zero. Didn't really dig it too much, but I liked the general idea that they were going for, a more single-player focused Mortal Kombat game that's got a lot to do with the story and overall world. For anyone who doesn't know, the Mortal Kombat 1 tournament takes place in Earthrealm. The Mortal Kombat 2 tournament takes place in Outworld. The Mortal Kombat 3 tournament takes place when the worlds are merging together, so Outworld and Earthrealm. The game is centered around the events of Mortal Kombat 2. The actual intro, which is one of the sickest intros I've ever seen still to this day, actually opens up with the ending events of Mortal Kombat 1 where Liu Kang defeats Shang Sun. And right after that cutscene, it pushes you straight into the events of Mortal Kombat 2. For the characters of the game, you can actually choose Kung Lao or Liu Kang. I actually prefer always playing as Kung Lao. I don't know why, but I just absolutely love the MK2 version of Kung Lao, and that's what this one is based off. There's another two characters that you can unlock later on, which is Scorpion and Sub-Zero, but it actually doesn't change the story of the game. The story will still be imagining that you're playing Kung Lao or Liu Kang, if that makes sense. So yeah, the main characters when the story is centered around is actually Liu Kang or Kung Lao. The fighting in the game is absolutely amazing. It genuinely feels fun to just beat up on everything in this game. It's You can fight in all eight directions of the game, which is a big deal that I remember they were advertising about. It doesn't You wouldn't really think much of it when you turn it on, like eight-way fighting, but you can fight in every single direction. It's a very crowd control heavy game. You actually have like your normal attacks that you can mash on. It doesn't even feel like a button masher game, but you can definitely play it that way if you want and just go wild and have fun. But it also has your grapple attacks, it has your air attacks, it has your powered up attacks, and it actually has special attacks as well that you can level up through an EXP system, so it's actually got RPG mechanics in it as well. There's legit infinites in the game. 
Now, it might sound like Broken have an infinite in the game, but no, really. One of the reasons I actually chose Kung Lao at the start is because he's got a really, really easy infinite, and you're like, whoa, this is really easy to do. You just jump, kick, 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 jump, kick, 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 and you get an infinite out of it. And every 10 combos, you get a multiplier on it, so it's a really easy way to get XP when you're playing as Kung Lao. It's not broken having the infinites because the game is very crowd control heavy. The game wants you to be killing loads of enemies as easy as you can, however you want. It's really not overpowered. And it wouldn't be a Mortal Kombat game without fatalities, and the way they implement fatalities into the game is really well done. Basically, you just have to build up your combo gauge, and then there's another gauge that lets you know you've got a fatality available to you. They're basically an instant kill on your average normal enemy. There's a few fatalities in the game for Liu Kang, Kung Lao, Scorpion and Sub-Zero when you eventually unlock them. You can actually do every fatality right off the bat when you start the game if you actually know the inputs already, but the game doesn't tell you them right off the bat. Just for like brand new players, the game kind of wants you to see the levels, examine the levels so you can find out the actual inputs yourself. But just so you know, you can use every fatality right off the bat if you want. You actually get more XP for doing fatalities as a finisher as well, so that helps with you powering up your special abilities. There's no just fatalities, there's actually the multality that you get, I think like halfway through the game, and basically that takes out, like I was saying, the game is a crowd control game, so the multality is really good to use if you're surrounded by enemies. There's also the brutality that you open up later on, which basically makes you, I think, almost invulnerable. You know, I don't really use them too much, the multality and brutality, but just because they use so much of the gauge that takes away from your fatalities, I much prefer just to use fatalities overall. But the fact that they are there, it's definitely worth mentioning. They're cool to use, more fun ways to play the game. It's definitely worth mentioning, but this game also has co-op mode in it. Uh, me and my cousin used to play this game from time to time as well. It's always good because back in the PS2 era, that era of games in general, there was a lot of games that you could play co-op and I was so grateful that they added it to Shaolin Monks. It just made sense anyway being like an action-adventure beat-em-up. Why not let you play as two characters? I'm so glad they did it. It basically means that you share a health pool with player two and everyone has to be more careful. You'll decide who gets health pots, who gets XP. That's how it works. Like a co-op game should work like that. It's worth mentioning. Thought I'd put it in there. This game is a co-op game as well, but it does not take away from it being a single-player adventure. Like it, it won't take anything away from that. I thought I would get the combat part of the video out the way, just because the main draw of the game actually is near the combat for me. Even though, I will say this though, if the combat was bad, the game as a whole would be worse. That is a fact. But it's not the main thing I love about Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. When they were making this game, they knew absolutely who their core audience that they were going after was. This game is an absolute wet dream for people like myself that consider the original Mortal Kombat trilogy one of the best series of all time. When you step out of the first level, Goro's Lair, into the pit, which is such an iconic stage from Mortal Kombat 1, and you meet characters like Johnny Cage and Reptile right then and there, and you're standing on top of the pit, and you can throw all these enemies into the pit, and they all have their unique cutscene going into the bed of spikes at the bottom. It's like, wow, I genuinely feel like I'm in the Mortal Kombat world. That is one of the things that this game is fantastic at. Being loosely based on Mortal Kombat 2 gives us the advantage of visiting almost all the areas from Mortal Kombat 2. Some of the classic areas that we visit in this game are places like the Living Forest, the Soul Tombs, the Wastelands to be one of my favourites as well, the Foundry, the Deadpool, which is such a classic. One of my favourite parts of the entire game was just going into the Evil Monastery and just, I can literally find the screen that the Mortal Kombat 2 stage takes place on and you can just stand there and it looks like Mortal Kombat 2. There's even areas for Mortal Kombat 1 in there and Mortal Kombat 3. Mortal Kombat 3 has the Nether Realm, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Mortal Kombat 1 has the Wuxi Academy, so there's little things like that in there too. These are things about the game that make it an absolute must play for Mortal Kombat fans, even today. And the way the game actually structures itself is it actually works like a tournament. Every time you fight a boss, because you fight a boss at the end of all these levels, you get a token. And every time you get one of those tokens, it adds towards fighting the final boss. The door to the final boss opens like you're finally at the end of the tournament. It's done really well. I don't know how to 
mark this as like spoiler free or anything because I'm kind of just talking about one of my favorite games of all time here but like some of the bosses we fight are like Katana, Jade, Melina, Goro, Baraka, Reptile to name a few, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, it's just amazing. Like I cannot recommend this game enough in that regard for a Mortal Kombat fan. And the way the boss fights are done are really well. It's not just like fighting a standard enemy. The bosses have actual gimmicks going on within the boss fights that you need to figure out. Some of them are quite tough, like Reptile legit turns invisible and can be quite annoying, especially if you're actually playing on hard mode. So if you're actually playing in co-op mode, some of the bosses can be a wee bit easier in that regard because it's kind of like two on one. But the Jade and Melina fight in Katana is kind of like three on one if you don't go without a co-op partner. Nonetheless, the bosses are amazing, and the end boss fight is absolutely amazing as well. It's a really hard boss fight where you have to go through a gauntlet of Shang Tsung, Kintaro, and Shao Kahn. It's actually quite an annoying fight because you need to take down all three of them at once, and on hard mode it's especially hard. And it wouldn't be a Mortal Kombat game without secrets. Mortal Kombat games have always been famous for having secrets, and this one's no different. There is secret boss fights where you fight people like Kano, Ermac, you can fight Melina again as well. All these secret boss fights in the game. And if you can believe this, I recently just found out that you can actually see smoke in the game. I never even knew this. I've played this game since 2006 and I didn't even know smoke was in the game and you can visit the Pit 2 stage. I didn't even think the Pit 2 stage was in Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, but that gives me something to look forward to on my next playthrough. But I genuinely can't believe I didn't know about it. And that's because the game has a completion marker. So I always had 100% completion in the stats screen. So how would I know there was anything left to find? But there is. There's actually a secret mission with smoke and I never even knew about it. I cannot believe it. I don't know if it's something that would maybe irk some people in this day and age with how AAA video games are, narrative experiences as they're called, but uh, the voice acting in the game is no like the toppest tier ever. It's actually quite funny in a lot of areas. It's comedic, so I think you need to take it with a grain of salt when you actually do hear it. The game has gave birth to a lot of meme stuff over the years that is still funny to this day. Are you okay? So try and not take it too serious. I've absolutely loved reminiscing about this game. I love visiting the environments of this game every time I turn it on. I love the combat. There's not really anything I hate about this game. It's genuinely one of the best Mortal Kombat games ever created as far as I'm concerned. And I find it an absolute game and crime that Warner Brothers, Netherrealm, whoever's in charge of Mortal Kombat these days, doesn't see it as a problem that this game is not available to the modern audience in some sort of HD remaster. I honestly thought we would have had it by now, but we actually don't have a HD remaster of this game. I would love to play it with widescreen and HD graphics and even something like online co-op would be a dream for this game. There is an Xbox version of this game where you can hack in widescreen so you can experience it like that but nothing above the signal of 480p so it would have been really nice if we can one day get this game at like 4k maybe higher textures but honestly I just want this game available to everybody so they can play it. And who knows, maybe one day we'll get that sequel that we never got for Shaolin Monks. When it comes to Mortal Kombat today for me as a fan, I've not really been a proper fan since MK9. I think Mortal Kombat 9 was the last one that I truly liked it was a fighting game. And I think one of the reasons I actually really enjoyed it was because I think they borrowed a lot from the story of Shaolin Monks and put it in the retelling of the story for Mortal Kombat 9. I think you can see it. I don't really like the lore of the recent games too much. I actually did not buy Mortal Kombat 1. I did buy MKX and MK11, but I kind of put my foot down with MK1 because I genuinely feel like the game was coming out a bit bare boned. And the game's been out for a little while now and it kind of feels like the game's dying down. So I don't know really what's going on with Mortal Kombat 1. I'm kind of glad I dodged a bullet on that one. I would love to go back to a simpler time of games like Shaolin Monks. I think now is the perfect time for them to release Shaolin Monks again. But who knows, maybe because it's no full of 
loot box opportunities and microtransactions, they won't do it. I don't know. Thanks a lot to everybody who watched and listened to me talk about one of my favourite games. I'll catch you in the next one.